and welcome to season five of the NGO Whisperer Show. My name is Dr. Caroline Opinde. I am the founder of the NGO Whisperer and the convener of the NGO Whisperer Masterclass, the official sponsors of the NGO Whisperer Show. Here at the NGO Whisperer, we provide technical support to nonprofits and social enterprises so they can successfully impact people's lives. Joining us today from Mpumalanga in South Africa is Mpo Adlaid Plachi. Mpo is one of the NGO Whisperer Global Fellows Class of 2021. She is the founder of Itemba Mentorship and Development Nonprofit. Mpo, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Dr. Caroline, and also it's an honor for me to be interviewed on this show. You work in communities around South Africa, focusing on community development in rural South Africa. What inspired you to set up Itemba Community Development Project? I was involved in a project that was started by our Department of Social Development, which was mentoring girls in rural areas in the high schools. And then later on, they incorporated the boys when the program was reviewed. And then uh, because I was involved in that program and what they were um, focusing on, it resonated with me because they were trying to mentor these young people in the rural areas because there's lack of resources. So I felt that, okay, with the life skills that we were doing, the strategies that we were using, I felt that this is, it makes sense because we are mentoring young people, we make them to be future leaders. So when the uh, time then of that, that pilot project that ended, it was not clear what would be the next step in the plans. And then I decided that, all right, maybe I should start and continue with the work that I have already started and continue with it. And then I started this September mentorship and development. In 2013, it was officially registered as an NPO in South Africa with our NPO directorate from social development. So that's how I got involved in NPO sector. You work in rural areas promoting community development. What types of development work are you doing? Who are your beneficiaries? And who do you partner with to ensure that this work is sustainable? The major part of the work that we are doing, we are mentoring the young people, as I have said. So basically we do life skills that are relating to health because we want to promote their health in the first place so that they can also make good decisions and the right decisions as they are growing up because we know teenagers are young people and uh, they are growing up to be young adults and later on to be adults. So we want them to be responsible adults. So the life skills that we are doing with them, they relate to HIV and AIDS. They also relate to gender-based violence as we know, especially in South Africa, that gender-based violence is very rife especially in our communities and black communities, as much as violence happens in all the communities. But with my experience of having been involved in community development in our communities, I felt that is rife. So gender-based violence uh, related life skills, sexual reproductive health uh, life skills, and also recently we incorporated intrapreneurial skills because we, uh, our main focus, as much as we are focusing on mentoring these young people, we want them to grow up so that they can make a difference in their own communities. And that is a sustainability on its own because we're teaching them so that they can be responsible adults and work in their own communities as well. So the entrepreneurial skills 
while they are still young and in the school, we want to inculcate in them that mindset of having businesses of their own. And in a way, is fighting the teenage pregnancies as well, because we know um, there is a concept of uh, sugar uh, daddies, where our young people, they, they fall in love with older men so that they can get money. So this entrepreneurial skills is kind of making them to be financially secured at an early age and also to say to them, you need to do something for yourself and not rely for somebody else and uh, for those uh, monies that they get from older men. So that's our focus, our is the young people and the, our partners that we work with because we're in the GBV space, Social development is the custodian of, of these projects, which is called, called in South Africa, victim empowerment. So because uh, they have to manage what is happening regarding gender-based violence, so they are our partners. For example, uh, we are funded by them through their agency, which is National Development Agency. Uh, other partners is other lo uh, or local NGOs that are involved in GPV related um, uh, activities. So we have local women organizations that we are part of, also other NGOs in the East London area of Buffalo City where we, we, we can work together, of which for me, it, 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 it's working for sustainability as well. Because if I'm invited in one of the NGOs, it means I can go and help out in that organization. And later on, when I have a, a, an event, they can come to my event and present uh, to my event. Also in our partnership, I do in my church prison ministries, so they are our partners as well, because with the life skills that I'm doing, we want to do that with the young people that are out of school so that we can prevent um, the crime that they are involved in, we prevent before they can get caught and go into prison. So I co collaborate with them and exchange the life skills that I'm doing with Itemba so that we can be able to make impact on that side as well. Um, I will also mention uh, another partner that is very important to us, which is Queen Glamsdown Child and Youth Care Centre. That is where our offices are. So we work together with them. This is a place that has brought me where my career started because I first went as a social worker. That's where I first went when working with children in the children's home. So because they have space and um, the areas where we can do even vocational skills because it's a big uh, establishment. So we also partner with them with other activities that we are doing as in Tema mentorship. Let's take this in Oshaya and go into the last six months where you are part of the NGO Whisperer Global Fellowship Program. Share with us what motivated you or inspired you to sign up for the NGO Whisperer Global Fellowship Program. Dr. Caroline, I'm a social worker by profession and all my career, I always worked with NGOs. I never worked for South African government. So when I saw that advertisement, I felt that it's talking to me because I'm a firm believer to lifelong learning. We're learning all the time. So I felt that when the opportunity was presented, I must grab it and I must apply for it because at the same time, at that time when the advert came out, our organization was facing a lot of strain uh, regarding the financials, the finances. So we're struggling financially. And uh, also I felt that as a leader, I need to empower myself 
So when I read it, I felt that I think this, it has something for me. There's something that I can learn from this as a leader because you need to learn all the time as a leader. And also the fact that my NGO was facing a lot of uh, financial challenges. So I felt that, you know, there is something that I will learn so that we can upgrade ourselves and also fulfill our needs as the organization. What are the three key areas of learning or areas of new knowledge or insights that you gained at the NGO Whisperer Global Fellowship Program? The insights that I have learned, there's a lot that I have learned. And the topics that we, we, we covered, some of them are close to my heart, like monitoring and evaluation, and also the proposal writing, it's something that is lacking in me, of which as a leader is something that I should be confident about and is one of the reasons as well that I signed up for it, for this course. Um, if I can just mention a few things that, have, um, that I have learned, is the strategic leadership that you have to be intentional as you are a leader and also the self-awareness that you have to look at yourself where you want to be. You have to continually look at yourself. Where are you now and where you want to be in the, where you want to be in the next three, six or even, you know, 12 months to come. So this thing uh, was profound for, for, for me because sometimes we do, we do things just naturally. We don't think what we are doing. But I have not had a time to look as a leader as to where I want to be in the next two, three, uh, five months or six months. Uh, another thing that I have learned is the change management. I like um, the, that topic. And also it gave me time to look at myself because as much as I'm doing the NGO, uh, I'm in the NGO space uh, having founded and uh, naturally this organization, in order for me to, to, to survive, I had to go and be employed. So it gave me time to look back uh, at myself as an employee and my experiences that I have experienced as an employee. And also now being in the NGO space, having founded this organization and leading the volunteers that we work with. I learned something that says that change, you have to you have to be human about it. And the change is natural and it's something that we cannot avoid. You have to work with people and you have to value people. So that for me, it was very important for me to, to, to reflect on that, that change is, is, is important and you have to be human about it. And we have to look at the people who are involved in the change that is taking place. How has your organization changed or evolved as a result of your participation at the NGO Westboro Global Fellowship Program? My organization has really changed over the next six months. And um, I plan that it must not be just during this time that I'm involved in this fellowship, even in the near future, we must continue with that growth and that progress that uh, we, 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 we have experienced. One of the things that we, we, we have done during uh, the homeworks that we're doing in class, I made sure that I'm responding to those homeworks according to our needs is what we need. For example, the resource mobilization plan. So I was able to, to, to make our resources, resource mobilization plan according to what we need as the organization. So now we've got a resource mobilization plan, which I need to, 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 to review because we did that at the beginning of the fellowship. Also, we have a social media strategic plan 
where we are intentional about what we are posting and how and when. We know all of us, we use social media, but I didn't know that you have to have a plan and a focus when you are using social media, marketing your organization. So we've got that marketing plan now in our organization. And also with the organizations that we work with, we didn't like, you know, do an MOU, but now at least we have MOUs in place with our partners that we work with, especially the Kobe, the one that is doing a uh, prison ministry and also the uh, children's home where we are based. So we have grown in such a way that now we have like the documents in place that give us a, strate a strategic vision as the organization to go forward and to do the things that we do because we are well informed and we know where we're coming from and where we are going. What does the future of Itembo community development look like in the next 12 months? I think the future is to soldier on, first of all. Prior to COVID-19, we were struggling financially and we continued to soldier on. And with the um, topic of um, having learned how to write proposals now, I think the important thing to do is to focus on writing proposals so that we can make sure that we continue with uh, developing our communities because without funding, we cannot be able to impact our communities. So the future is like, we want to do what we are doing now in a more massive way so that we can make impact. So I will continue um, using what I have learned in the past six months, especially with the proposal writing, with the proposal writing, because we want to focus more on gender-based violence and make the awareness in the communities. And also as a social worker, it's, it, it, it forms part of me that I do child protection with the small children because as much as we are working in schools with older children, the younger children, I feel that we're not doing them a good service. So I do child protection there as well with the young children. And um, we, I, I feel that, you know, if we consider the younger children and the older children, that will make an impact in our communities. What last message do you have for governments, for civil society organizations, for good citizens on community development, especially in rural areas where you work in South Africa? Collaboration working together, I think that's the most important thing that we need to do as civil society and the government to invest in the NGOs. Because I feel that NGOs, they've got a very most important part to play in our communities because some of us they are working in the, at the grassroots level. So we know the communities, we have a relationship with the communities. So that working together with all of us, it will make an impact in our communities and we will develop our communities. So the working together, the collaboration, and also I think to take part in the fellowship like the NGO Whisperer that has uh, started because they bring in a value in what we are doing. The, the past six months, it could have been like, maybe let's say a, a, a diploma that I have done, which uh, is adding value to the uh, work that I'm doing as an NGO, uh, as an NGO leader. Thank you so much, Mpo. Adelaide Plachi, the NGO Westbrook Global 
Fellow, Class of 2021, and the founder of Itemba Mentorship and Community Organization that works in rural areas in South Africa. We really appreciate you. Mpo, where can people find you on social media? We are on Facebook and uh, we go by Itemba Mentorship. And also we have IMED Girl Child, which is specifically dedicated to, to, to girls and, 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 and young women. And also we are on Twitter, which is at IMED Itemba 2016. That's where you can find us. Please do follow us and do visit us more often. Thank you so much, Mpo Adelaide Plachi, one of the NGO Whisperer Global Fellows Class of 2021. It's been a great honor and a pleasure to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and remember, it's all about connecting people, raising funds, and impacting lives globally.